Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video, and we are at the NEC, and there's a setup day for the classic car show, which is this weekend. Today is Thursday, and I'm with iconic auctions to buzz around all the cars here. 165 cars are in this catalogue and about 200 bikes in another hall. I don't think we're going to have time to look at the, the bikes on this thing. But being set up date, there's going to be lots of noise, background noise happening. Over there's the Janetta Owners Club tapping away, trying to make their floor look lovely. And there's cars still being pushed in. The security here, I'm probably going to have to put a high-vis jacket on at some point, but I'm trying to hide away from that. But so many cars to feature. I went through the catalogue the last couple of days. There's a lot of post-it notes to have a look at. Now, say, as I say, today is Thursday. Tomorrow, Friday, is the first viewing day, and it's a slightly different format over the weekend for the actual auction itself. The car auction is Saturday the 11th of November, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. Normally they do automobile first. This time, no, it's the cars that start in the morning and it will run through to about four o'clock. So all the cars I'm featuring today are under the hammer on Saturday, this weekend, and then the bikes are on the Sunday, and Automobilia is actually in the afternoon, late afternoon of Saturday. So, where do we start? Well, there's a sea of fast forwards over here, and I'm just gonna start with this one. This is the 1991 Ford Sierra RS Sapphire Cosworth, and this is the Rouse edition, 304R it's termed, four wheel drive, and only 19,000 miles from you. And I'm starting with this because I know there's so much noise. We'll look at that RS500 next door on those Sierras, but I think the Sapphire Cosworth 4 before is the one, the pick of the range, as it were, if you're actually going to use this and drive it. And Rouse, Andy Rouse, obviously raced Sierra in the uh, British car, Touring Car Championship, and he knew how to make a quick Sierra Cosworth. And this one, at that sort of mileage, and with the 304 kit on it, is a proper machine. Everybody gets excited about Audi Quattros. Well, this is the UK's Audi Quattro. And he did really nice things, I think. He put these Recaro seats in, beautifully shaped, Recar um, with Rouse Sport there. Driving them in period, you just thought they were the quickest cars on the road. Today, they're not the quickest cars on the road, but they are very exciting cars, and this car is guided at 60 to 65,000 pounds. Another super rare car, the Ford Capri RS31, so 3,100cc. This was a homologation special, so they could go racing, so Cosworth did the modification on this and they did obviously the, the a few road cars so they could go racing and this is quite a famous car it does lots of concours events well known within the rs club circle huge great spoiler on the back of it utterly pristine apparently there's a corgi model that is done off this car with the rs wheels and again guided at 60 to 70 thousand pounds i'm not going to do all the fours just there's three here that are particular favorites and if I was going to buy a fast four to put in my collection, this is the one I would choose. This is 1971 Ford Escort Mark I RS 1600. Just a regular Escort, you might think, but no. Under there is the BDA twin cam engine, so belt drive engine rather than chain drive. That was the, the competition engine of choice. I think it came from um, Formula 3. It's a single-seater type engine in an Escort, for goodness sake. Utterly beautiful, this one. I cannot fault it. And beautifully restored, and I'm afraid that's reflected in its price of 70 to 80,000 pounds. But God, look at it. There's a few more over here that we ought to have a look at. First car I want to see is this M3. Now, this E36 M3, but this one's a bit special. This is out of collection of JK and E knows good cars. And this is the evolution version of it. Quite rare. You need to be a bit nerdy on your M3s to know this one even exists. So a regular um, E36 was 286 horsepower when it came out. This is 321 horsepower. Uh, it has manual uh, gearbox, six-speed gearbox in this one trick suspension etc and guided at 30 to 35 thousand pounds when you think what the e30 m3 is affecting near 100 now bit of a sleeper and one to watch as are these two really the two alphas here now this sz 
what do I say about this? I've done a video on these. Um, they are extraordinary cars. The whole thing, it was the Gato built, um, this composite body, but it's actually relatively heavy. I, it's not a super lightweight, but it's just the styling of it. As we all know, it was El Monster. It was known at when it came out. I think when they did come out, what year is it? 1990, the SZ. And this one, very usable, right colour combination, and 50,000 kilometres from you, so 30,000 miles. And because of that, it's guided relatively reasonably at 60 to 70,000 pounds. Oh, for the same money, an equally rare Alfa Romeo, the Montreal here earlier 1972 this one and I recently did that tour around the Alfa Romeo Museum and there was one of those there and it had this V8 engine they weren't really thinking that they were actually going to produce it they showed it in I think it was New York and there was such a clamor for it well perhaps we will produce it after all and they had to change the bonnet this is just done so they could actually fit the V8 engine underneath and I've always loved these peculiar sort of light covers here and you think well how do they work well they actually when you turn the lights on they rotate and go underneath there I love the color on this one as well looks a very unusual car um, and left-hand drive they're all left-hand drive but it's just been sort of redone not restored but thoroughly gone through bill of eleven thousand pounds in january of this year and guided at the same 60 to seventy thousand pounds now this lamborghini gallardo i wanted to feature and i'm going to do a, a fair bit on this one because i do not understand the values of these lamborghinis they were a couple at cywell and they struggle to reach their base price I don't get it. This is a V10 Lamborghini from 2005, manual and su super usable. I think it gets better looking by the day and guided at 60 to 70,000 pounds. Just think how much you have to pay for other Lamborghinis usable. Yes, there's the Audi R8 out there as well, but my goodness, would I rather own a Gallardo than a, a Audi R8? Uh, Okay, they're four-wheel drive that doesn't make them super playful like perhaps a Ferrari 360 can be, but it's got an extra 100 horsepower. It's got a V10 engine in it. It's super usable. And as I say, they look super sharp to me. So it's one, I think, for the future. A Gallardo manual is one I would love in the collection and lots of other people would too. Super usable, as I say, guided at 60 to 70,000 pounds. I hope this one sells because it deserves to. Ah, uh, two cars here, two hot hatches. You could not get two more different hot hatches than a GR Yaris or a Clio Phase 1 V6. Both around the 30,000 pounds mark. If you want to go quick and go on track days, you buy that. If you want to scare yourself and tell your mates you've got a V6 Clio, well, you buy that one. But yeah, couldn't be more different. Fun to see them here. I'm not sure I'm going to feature this MG. They were peculiar cars in their day. They, they, they Cavalli, they came over, Di Tommaso. Um, they're Di Tommaso's that were then bought by Cavalli and then Cavalli then um, came into MG. MG at the time wanted a statement car, so they did this. We actually had one at Evo magazine, yeah, 2004, and we somehow got a long-termer offered to us, and we offered it to Rowan Atkinson. And I can remember about after a sort of six weeks, we had a phone call from Rowan saying, can I hand it back, please? It wasn't really his thing at all. But it is a peculiar SVR and guided at 55 to 65,000 pounds. They will be, I suppose, a collectible car because they're very niche and very spectacular. What else have we got here? Right, well, yeah, I have to feature these two. So a, a Project 8, as I have, and a Project 7. And basically hardly any miles. I think it's done 400, it's done 106 miles from new. So they did do a few miles of, before they were let out to customers, so it might only be that. Uh, I can't quite understand how they're sitting at around 100, 100 well, 120,000 seems to be where they actually sell for. This is a four-seater one as well. They seem to be more valuable than the two-seater one with the track pack, as it was were, because they're just more usable. Proper sleeper, Q-car-esque, 
if you take all the all the decals off it well then it looks a bit more XE but then you see how pumped up it was the engineers went to town on this car um, 200 mile an hour 600 horsepower and although they said there it's one of 300 they actually only built 200 of these and the reason for that was because it was a little late coming to market and it hit um, restrictions in September 2018 of gas particulate filters which were required in the exhaust and this doesn't have them. I know the engineers tried putting gas particulate filters on it and it no longer did 200 miles an hour so the decision was made that we'll sell them in the form that it did a 718 lap around the Nürburgring and without gas particulate filters and only build 200 of them. So that's the history to that one. This one is guided at 90 to 100,000 pounds. After the number of people who have phoned me up and asking about this car and whether they should bid on it, I think it will go for a fair bit more. We will see. You've got to remember the UK is easily the cheapest place to buy either of these two cars for whatever reason. In Europe, they're worth way more money than they are in the UK. Now, Project 7, this is, I think, a little forgotten, this one. People don't realise how wild and mad this car is. 2015, and this example, again, I think it's no miles, is it? Yeah, 488 miles. They were very different to a regular F-Type. People think they're just an F-Type with a um, fancy paint job. No. They were cut down screen. This is shorter. A normal F-type screen is somewhere up here. This one was cut down and then it had these unique body panels, had a manual roof instead of electric roof and this dome either side, depending if it's a left or right hand drive. 250 of these were made and the American market do differ. They did not get the cut down screen. They got airbag wheels and they're basically a bit heavier than the European spec you see here, of which there are about 150 of the 250 built. The other thing European spec cars got and UK's didn't was a helmet like that. Now this was shown in the, with the actual concept car. European Project 7s were delivered with this, UK's weren't. But some owners got wind, like me, and obviously the owner of this car, and said, can you do me a helmet? So that is a very rare collector piece to go with your Project 7. Uh, the other thing to say about this, they are properly wild. I own, as I say, both of these cars. Once this is hooked up, because it's 575 horsepower and two-wheel drive, it is quicker than the Project 8 in a straight line. It is wild. They are speed limited to 300 kilometers an hour, 186. God knows what the top speed would be. And you, to match the power to weight ratio on this, which I think is 368 a ton, somewhere around there, you have to buy a 992 Turbo S cab is the same power to weight ratio as this. 1580 kilos makes it about 250 kilos lighter than a convertible, um, F-Type SVR with the same engine, 250 kilos lighter, as wild as you want these things. Over in uh, Europe, these are close on £200,000 here, and yet here, this is guided at one ten to £130,000. I'll be very interested coming back here in 10 years and see what one of these is worth, because it is a proper bit of kit. The other thing on this car, it is colour is Goodwood Blue. And that wasn't a standard colour for a Project 7. There were several owners wanted it uh, because it was the concept colour. And Jaguar Land Rover said, well, we can paint it that colour, but it's going to cost a lot. And I remember it being around £20,000 to have this colour. There was four or five cars done in it, and it really suits it. As you imagine, there's several Porsche 911s in here. But this one, I just want to pick this one out because this is an original 1966 two-litre example, so the short wheelbase one, and just beautifully done, beautifully presented. It was a US car, and it is utterly pristine, having looked around it. It was a £100,000-plus car, restored, and I can't get over this. It's uh, done 55,000 miles from you, and it's offered as no reserve. It's guided at... 80 to 100,000 pounds. I bet it will make that all day long. Absolutely pristine, stunning. Ah, there's a couple of Esprits. I'll just quickly show you this one. Now, this um, V8 Esprit, this was actually the property of Danny Bahar, which, if you know Lotus history, was the boss man brought in to revolutionise um, Lotus. 
all didn't quite end as, uh, very well, but uh, this was his V8 and he got the guys at Lotus to restore it for him and over £100,000 was spent restoring this car. It is obviously as new, as new as you can get, 41,000 miles uh, recorded and guided at 60 to 80,000 pounds. But if you want an absolute top-notch V8 Esprit, that's the one. Really nice manual 360 here, 4,700 miles from new. Um, and guided at 90 to 100,000 pounds. I'm afraid the Maris takes the price of that. Or, slightly less, you can have this Honda NSX, 74,000 miles, guided at 75 to 85,000 pounds. But I wanted to show you this other Esprit. I still think it's the best looking Lotus Esprit ever made. And Lotus Esprit S2 JPS colors. So 1979 to celebrate the connection with the JPS F1 car. Um, these were two litre engines and they were um, rare, they weren't turbo, but they're so, to me, an iconic colours for the Lotus Esprit. And this is beautifully restored and it's number 68 of the 100 cars built. It's done a few miles, yeah, 73,000 miles, and that's reflecting its guy price of 55 to 65,000 pounds. But it's such a design icon for me. Ah, oh, another car with no reserve is this 2002 M3M Coupe S54 so this is the later one with a higher horsepower engine I think it was 320 horsepower engine 45,000 miles from you these are incredibly collectible now on the continent but values are way higher in Europe than they are in the UK this being right hand drive is guided at 45 to 55,000 pounds almost double that in, in Europe what a thing I could go on, poor old Tom, I'm sorry about this, but look at this, 3 litre CSL, 1973. This has got the injection one. This is its original colours. I don't know, I can remember these. This was a dream car, 1973. It was so far ahead of what other people were doing. And then you saw it racing as well. Um, 96,000 miles and 75 to 85,000 pounds. Just wanted to show you this SL, R107 SL from uh, done by the SL shop, they've done a lot of work on it, but it's not what you think because this one has been converted to electric at a cost of around £200,000 I'm told and we've just seen it moving about, very bizarre and even odder, it's got a manual gearbox in it as well. It's guided at forty-five to £55,000, so a fair bit cheaper than its build cost. It's obviously pristine being SL shop but a very interesting take. If you want an electric SL, there you go. But there's a couple of E-types I want to show you over here. Now, there's quite a number of E-types in this sale. A beautiful Series 1, 3.8, with 6,000 miles recorded, 6,700. Sensibly guided about 75, 80,000 pounds, or a fully restored 4.2 at 90 to 110,000 pounds here. But the one I wanted to show you is this one. This is the V12. And this, I like the colour on this one, and this has been fully restored as well and sort of brought up to date. And it's one of those cars, if you look at the spend on the restoration to get it to this standard and what it's actually available for, they're very different numbers. So over £100,000 spent on this car, it's a manual as well, and this is a highly usable car, cruising, continental cruiser, whatever you're going to do with it got space in it yes they're better looking the 4.2 but this is just that much more modern and you get the v12 engine and it's available at 55 to 65 thousand pounds i really quite like that one or completely in other end of the scale look at this one when you think oh this is a very early e-type as well paint isn't right um, but engine runs on this car and this is a restoration project but it's quite a Someone has owned this for 50 years, 50 years of single ownership, being kept stored in the dry. I've tapped around it. It seems to be pretty rot-free. I am not saying it's rot-free. I haven't looked underneath. It might be a horror show. But having looked at the engine, engine runs. And as a restoration project, this is a very good place to start. So 1964, 3.8, Series 1, 
guided at 20 to 30,000 pounds. A 20,000 pound E-type. So I'm quite tempted with that, but there are much better examples around here for a lot more money. But if you want a project, how about this one? This Lotus Europa. I've always loved this Roman purple colour that you got on Lotus in the period. Didn't actually leave the factory of this, but this has been subject to a very big 30,000 pound restoration. And twin cam engine, this is the later one. New oatmeal interior, looks absolutely lovely. The trouble with Lotus of this period, and I own in a land, is sort of all the shut lines are a bit bigger, they're not quite as precise. That was just what it was like in Lotus with their fiberglass build, but such an exciting car to own and to drive this car and guided at 26 to 30,000 pounds. But I wanted to just show you this Porsche down here, which is beautifully built and I think a bit of a forgotten hero. So this is the 944 S2 cab. And I think the Cabriolet version actually looks better than the sort of the big glass screen at the back. There is something about this and it is just beautifully built. Now this is 91, I think this car is. I drove one in 1990 and it drove beautifully. There was just Porsche essence, just the way it went down the road, super solid, super, just a quality above what I'd driven up to that point. And this one is only 20,000 miles from new and it's guided at 20 to 25,000 pounds. I think that's just a bargain for the actual quality and your drive experience of that car and they're a sleeper. Everybody thinks 911 in Porsche, but a 91 S2 is a fantastic machine. And the S2 gained the 3 litre engines, 210 horsepower, much beefier than the original 2.5 litre engine. Now there's a couple of cars over here I want to show you. So, 1973 Jensen Interceptor, except this isn't. This is one done by Jensen Automotive International. And this beautiful Jensen has re been re completely redone, up, uh, re upholstered, and also has the Chevrolet Corvette drivetrain in it. So, that their V8 engine, their automatic gearbox, and it looks fantastic. Two wheel drive. Now, these today are super expensive cars to do. You won't get much change from £400,000 to get your Jensen to look like this. And this one, 17,000 miles done since it was all fully converted and guided to 80 to 90,000 pounds. Now here's a nice surprise I saw in the auction. I wasn't expecting to see a Honda Civic Type R, 2005. And God, this was a great car when it came out. I remember driving these at Evo. That gear change with the aluminium stick right by the dash, just where your hand falls. And they were just huge fun, hugely usable big car that you could use a family car and then had this racy VTEC engine in it and this one 17,000 miles from new and guided at 10 to 15,000 pounds but no reserve amazing go find another as they used to say now this one just a 1972 Datsun 240Z I'm just featuring this because a lot of people um, think about what they're going to use their cars for, how about doing those historic rallies etc and you can see this car has been very busy doing that sort of thing. It is fully kitted out and it's one of those cars if I was going to do rallies I would buy a car that's fully prepped like this, is proven and the 240Z is pretty bulletproof mechanically and all of this Go enter any rally you want and guide it at 35 to 40,000 pounds. This is very special as well. Lotus Elise Series 1, and I've been lucky enough to drive this car a couple of years ago, 1997, because I wanted to revisit a Lotus Elise and just see what there is about. And this car has only done 1900 miles from new, and it's all on its original wheels, original brakes, original interior lovely colour and it's another no reserve car but even better than that whatever it makes is going to charity so it's all going to the kids club Kampala charity and it's guided at 25 to 30 thousand pounds but what a stunning car if you want a proper original series one at least you, I don't think you'll find a finer one than that one yeah 
bonkers car here, Aston Martin Vanquish, but not any old Vanquish. This is an original press car, and this is a promotional car for the James Bond film Die Another Day. Now, these just come off. This is just for show because the owner of this car had it on display in his office and he used to put these on to, for amusement, as you would. But it's, um, it was actually then owned by Dr. Uh, Betts, who was at CAO of Aston Martin at the time. And he drove it quite a lot, 52,000 miles this car has done. And it's guided at 55 to 65,000 pounds. But you do get the machine guns and these bits out the front as well. Now, I want to show you this Clio V6 over here. Now, this is, just looks a regular uh, V6, uh, obviously uh, phase one, but it isn't. Underneath the skin, this has been very gone through by Dave Tassel, behind the scenes expert of car SOS, and he's changed the engine on this. While well, reading through the details on it, I thought, what have you done that for? But he's actually put the Ford Duratec 3 litre V6 24 valve engine in it. And that's quite a trick engine because it was actually developed, as I understand, behind the scenes by Porsche and then Ford bought it in. And I imagine it goes very well in here. It would be similar horsepower as a regular one, 234 horsepower, 206 power, foot pound. And he's updated the brakes on it. He's gone right through it. Very intriguing, but because it's not quite standard, it's actually slightly lower value, but still affordable, 35 to 40,000 pounds for this very pretty Clio V6. Or a completely different Clio here, the Clio Williams. Now this is a super clean example, it's phase one, 1994, number 408. And these are really rising in value and quite rightly so, it's sitting on its gold wheels. They are very plus seats. It's peculiar when you drive them. They're, they're a lovely hot hatch. Obviously, I've got the 182. There's slightly, these are slightly softer, but they've still got that zingy engine feel. And I think they're even prettier with the lovely blue seat belts in it. And this 48,000 miles from you guided at 30 to 35,000 pounds. We're back in the fast forward corner and this a Capri RS26. I love this period. This is 1972. This is what we used to do, anti-reflective paint on the front bonnet because we had so much sunshine in the UK. But that's what that's about, just so you had a better view out. I, there's just too many to feature, really. But go and have a look online at all the lots, all the fast fours. Di Tommaso Pantera. So this is a Group 4 homage. I don't, I don't know if it's road register or not, but my goodness, what a machine that looks. But what I'm actually going to feature is this, this little Fiat 500. Now, this is a super early one, right-hand drive, what year is it, 1964. But the rare thing is it's got the suicide doors, as it's termed. And in this period, the roof doesn't just go to there. The convertible roof goes all the way down, like a modern 500, right down to here. So it's transformable. It's more of a convertible. And this is the one. If you're going to collect a Fiat 500, this is the one you want. And being a right-hand drive is super rare for this period. Um, and it's, yeah, it's fully restored, as you'd imagine. 37,000 miles from you, which is quite a long way in one of these, and 19 to 22,000 pounds. Or, sitting next to it, you couldn't get a more different car. 1977 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am Special Edition Y82 manual. Quite a mouthful, but look at it. And the shaker head, so the engine intake sort of up there actually shaking, poking through that bonnet. You can't help but love this bit of Americana. And being a manual gearbox is very rare. And yet, for such an iconic car from the, uh, 1977, guided at 30 to 40,000 pounds. And then another car. You, I love auctions because you do not know what you're going to see next. Ford Transit. Who would have think you'd get a Ford Transit in an iconic auction? But here it is, 1984 Mark II Transit twin wheel, long wheelbase, custom van. 18,000 miles from new. We had a look in the back. It is utterly pristine. Nothing has been put in the back of this car. I'm just bonkers and offered without reserve. How do you value something like that? But that's what you have an auction for, and we'll find out on Saturday how much it's worth. There's quite a number of these Evos in this sale. This is an Evo 6, beautiful condition, 27,000 miles and 23 years of ownership. Yeah, 30 to 35,000 pounds for that Evo 6 there. This is the last one, really, the Evo 10. 
FQ360, 28 to 34,000 pounds, 3,000 miles from new. Johnny Herbert, uh, R33, I was really surprised he had one of these. I had no idea, but he had it for quite a number of years, actually. Um, and 45,000 miles, he's just had a recent 10,000 um, pound recommission, as they term it, 58 to 68,000 pounds. Lovely example. I really, that was the first sky I ever drove, and it really got to me why these cars were so special, as is this Tommy Mackinnon edition, 27,000 miles, 95 to 105,000 pounds now for those. UK 300 um, horse, this is a um, Super Impreza 2001 UK 300, again, 20, 25,000 pounds with the bug eye lights. Now, I can't walk past this Americana. I, I want to not like them, but they are so in your face. The style is just spectacular. I mean, it's, I would only buy a restored one or a perfect one of this. Can you imagine trying to restore a car this size? 1960 Buick Las uh, convertible. So, yeah, the rocket tail lights on this one. Yeah, 86,000 miles, but 45 to 55,000 pounds. I wish they weren't that sort of tempting price. Should I get one? Oh, a Cougar, Mercury Cougar. Yeah, 1973, 30 to 40,000 pounds. But probably the pick for me is this. Camaro, um, yeah, Chevrolet Camaro, um, 396 SS. 396 is the cubic capacity of this engine. This is a manual one. Oh, I mean, just wild. I just want to hear this start up, uh, guided at 50 to 60,000 pounds. We heard this start up earlier, Ford Mustang, this is 68, a bullet homage, no end of these, but my goodness, don't they look good in this green of those proper wheels. Is this a manual or is this a, an auto? No, it's a manual and 52 to 62,000 pounds. A lovely little Targa, 1970 um, Targa, Porsche Targa, with skis on the back, it's got a ski rack, and that was the soft uh, Targa that rolls up rather than the hard thing. Uh, Alancia Delta Integrale as well, my goodness, 68 to 78,000 pounds. Maybe I should have kept mine. Right, the two most expensive cars in this auction. First one, this Aston Martin DBS. Now, this is a, is a very limited run car. I think there were 10 of these made, and it's the Super Legera Concorde. It celebrates everything about Concorde on it. There's a sort of ghost outline of Concorde there. There's one underneath. But I think the trickiest thing, the actual exhaust on this car look like the exhaust on Concorde. They're sort of like this jet engine, and they were an 18,000 pound option above the list price of this, which was huge. Um, this car is guided at 395 to 430,000 pounds, but one of 10. Or, completely different, what about this? Ford RS200 Evolution. I didn't realise there was an Evolution version of the Ford RS200. Obviously, it was all a homologation special for their rally, Group B car, and this final edition had a slightly bigger engine, 2.1 litre engine, that could be even more tuned. And the first one was limited to about 500 horsepower. If you tweak this one to its ultimate spec, 500 to 650 horsepower is what this RS200 produced. It only weighs just over a tonne. Bizarrely, this one is 12 miles from new and is guided at 500 to 700,000 pounds. The most expensive RS200 here. There's all sorts of fast fours here, but that is the ultimate. That is the crown and glory of those routes. Completely different car over here. This Range Rover, well worth have a look at that. Wanted to show you this Range Rover. So L322, obviously I've done that video with Jeremy Clarkson because we both own exactly the same car as this the exact same colour. This is the Queen's Range Rover. That's how it's been advertised. It was formerly the property of Her Majesty's Queen Elizabeth II. And it's known as photographs of her in it. And there's some lovely little details. If I look in here, I can see a little grab handle that helps her into the back seat when she was clambering in. And it obviously had the foot rolls there. It'd be very interesting to see what this car makes. There's a huge amount of interest in this car because of its the backstory towards it. Um, it's 109,000 miles, 
and it's guided at 50 to 60,000 pounds, but huge media interest in it and apparently a lot of interest in people buying it. But there's one more car I want to show you in this sale. Now, probably my favorite car here, this Mitsubishi Pajaro Evolution. This actually did the Dakar event in January 22 and finished. Look at it. We went down, Tom, who's behind the camera, we went actually out to Saudi in January this year and saw all the cars going around. It's a hell of a thing, bouncing through the dunes, the classics you see there, lots of these actually, and other oddball cars, pandas, a lot of pandas. There was even a Citroen CX the year we were there. But this, fully prepared and has all the proper stickers in it, Dakar Classic, Saudi Arabia, and I can never get over the price of these things because there is a, a regular one, a homologation one, they're around 20, 25,000, but this actual one that has done it is guided at 25 to 30,000 pounds. And it's the one I want out of the sale to rock around the farm in. So there you go, there's a real rush round all the cars on here. We haven't covered all 165 cars. If you want to find out more about them, then check out the Iconic Auctioneers website. And as I say, today's Thursday, tomorrow, Friday, is the viewing day. Saturday, all these cars are going to be sold and the sale starts at 10 o'clock in the morning and you can watch it live online on YouTube. The bikes are all, the motorbikes are all in another hall. We haven't had time to do them, but there's a huge collection of bikes there and they're under the hammer on Sunday. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming on very soon.